Hello, future past people. Dr. Random here. This weekend, I was happily surprised when I found out that I was selected to be take part in the open dev scenario of Humankind, an upcoming 4X game. It was called Towers of Babylon, and it is focused on this game's exploration phase, the first of the 4Xs of this genre. Does Humankind's early game tower over its competition? Find out here in this absolutely very brief review of my experience. Amplitude Studios has taken a nicely transparent and co-creative approach to the development of Humankind. I got access to the first of the Humankind open dev scenarios, and I have to say it's certainly refreshing to be able to play and even think along with the development of a game that PC Gamer has referred to as the Civ Killer. The question is open development, the only thing that is new under the sun here. Well, the first scenario has you take control over the city of Babylon during the ancient era of the game. It is important to underline that this game is still in the pre-alpha phase of its development and that it was just a small 45 minutes to one hour slice of what will certainly be epically long playthroughs. So you start off with a built city and some scouts. One of the interesting retro innovations here is how unit stacking and unstacking is a thing again. In contrast to old school stack of doom that you would have in civilization, here it feels like a tactical choice to have your units band together or strike out alone. This becomes most clear when you get into combat. This is when the game changes from a 4x strategy to a more tactical title. The first scenario only lets your units duke it out with animals, but it does feel interesting already as unit types and the terrain itself seem to have an actual input on the outcome of the battle. That said, this scenario is not really about combat at all, but it's about exploration. The map is very, very small still, and aside from some natural wonders, there is really nothing much to find. At least, that is if you don't include the curiosities, which sort of function like Civ's villages. There are points in the landscape that you can travel to and unlock some resources or sometimes an extra unit. There are a lot of these curiosities out there to find, which is maybe why they don't feel as impactful as entering one of Civ's villages, let alone if you would enter one of Moag's game's Old World's Ruins, which really is a story experience. That is not the case here. Of course, there is still the thrill of discovering an unknown world, yet something feels a bit off about this at the moment. As you run around painting in the map, Uncovering terrain doesn't really feel natural. Huge mountain ranges arise from the void of space, and it's kind of hard to read the land, running your scouting efforts, for example, into a coastal stretch. So, exploration does not feel all that interesting or satisfying at the moment. The first bit of the second X, expansion, does hit at something more meaty here. While roaming around, your units get to establish outposts. These outposts act as territorial markers, but can also be developed into cities for money. So far, there are no settlers, which for me is a welcome change to this type of game. Instead, the number of cities you can control is curtailed by the availability of administrators. Cities themselves grow much like you're used to if you've played a lot of strategy games already. Production is used to create districts, as well as specialty buildings, as well as units of course. It seems your city will grow from the center, which feels very organic. The type of buildings that you will be creating are also a bit more fine-grained than you may be used to. Rather than building a granary or a workshop, you will start building millstones or tanning racks as your first buildings. It's really too early yet to say something definite about humankind's tech tree, though it seems it has only one, with a large number of technologies in it. The Babylonians have a special focus on science, called philosophers of the wild, and they can have their cities enter some sort of science mode. This provides a big increase to your science output, to the exclusion of all other production. Engaging this mode for Babylon felt to me like I was really speeding through the early tech tree, which, I have to say, was pretty cool. But you may wonder, so what's the historical part in this historical 4X game? Well, the scenario told me that this particular playing with the past was going to be inspired by a real historical encounter. But I didn't really have any of those. Maybe the only meaningful encounter I had is a fight with a woolly mammoth, which is, I don't think, very historical to sort of have Babylon, <laughs> Babylonian soldiers and mammoths square it off. Uh, for the rest, it kind of feels a bit standard. Babylon looks like the city's always doing games like this. Uh, the tech tree is just something that is trotting along and maybe different in detail, but it's still going towards this particular pinnacle of civilization. There were some choice-based events that I won't really spoil too much of it, but they do call out specific parts of history that feel at home in the ancient world. That's cool, and the game will need more of that. More or less what it comes down to, at least for this very early exploration scenario, this is history as you've seen it before. 
So one thing that I was absolutely pleasantly surprised by was by the game's UI, its user's interface, it's, it, the menus, basically. They seem a lot less difficult, obtruse than most 4X games, because it's really, really, really very clean compared to most 4X games. So that's, I think, as well as with um, the animations that are already now very nice, the graphics are already nice, where this game is going to shine a little bit more than its competition, maybe. At the same time, it's a very early game. More scenarios are going to be coming up via OpenDev in the coming months. And if I or somebody else from Value is selected to play any of these scenarios, we're of course going to tell you what the future of this particular historical experience is going to hold for all of us. As always, thanks for watching. And if you have any comments, just let us know in the comment section below. Bye.